Um, so today I want to talk to you about kids with uh, labeled with things like ADD, ADHD, and different sensory issues, um, the challenges they face in how in our office we view them and how we look at them. So first of all, we hate labeling things in our office, giving people a diagnosis, putting them into a category or a box. It's just, it's too easy to label something you don't understand uh, as different and that way you can explain it away or ignore it or, or just put it in this category where you don't have to worry about it as much. And I, I don't like to look at things like that. And when you meet someone for the first time and you ask who they are, the most common thing that they're going to tell you is what they identify as. Um, so if you meet somebody and they say, yeah, I'm, I'm Susie, you know, and I have RA, if it's an adult or something like that, they identify with what they've been diagnosed or classified or labeled with. And I don't like that, especially when we're talking about kids. And I don't want to meet a kid and say, hey, buddy, what's your name? Say, yeah, I'm, I'm Johnny and I'm XYZ. I have ADD. I have ADHD. Um, I have ODD, whatever it is. I want to say, you know, hey, I'm Johnny and I'm a soccer player or I'm Johnny. I'm a big brother. or I'm Susie. I'm a Girl Scout or a princess, whatever it is. I don't want to meet a kid and have them. The first thing they tell me is what they identify as being a, a category or a disease or a disorder or something they've been labeled as. We want them to be themselves. So before we get going too far, let's take a quick look at where this started with us um, chiropractically and why we're looking at these different things. So with these kids, we started seeing a repeated pattern of histories um, and case histories and intakes. And it started way back a lot of times, even before uh, they were conceived or trouble getting pregnant. This causes a lot of stress, okay? Then going into pregnancy, having a stressful pregnancy, whether uh, it was relationships or moving from home to home or do doing different things like that, puts a lot of stress on the mom, okay? And when she's pregnant, her nervous system and her stress hormones and all that is going to be going right to the baby as well. So this is already putting a lot of stress onto these kids. And then after that, following up with a difficult delivery. So deliveries can be wonderful things. Giving birth, we, uh, my kid was just born on December 11th. I was in there. It was amazing, the most beautiful thing. Um, but it's still a stressful event, not just on mom, but on the baby. Whether it be a natural birth or a, a helped birth in any kind of way, forceps, suction, um, or even a C-section. If you watched any of those, there's a lot of stress that gets put on the kid, especially in the upper cervical area. And if you've been at our office, you know that we put a really, really big emphasis on that. I mean, that's one of the reasons it's a very delicate area and it gets messed with a lot at, at, uh, at birth. So next is the stressed out colicky baby, always crying, always just in that tense mode, never able to relax, you know, don't smile a lot. It's, that's really, really rough, not just on the kid, but on the families as well. But this is the next stage of that when we don't start getting these things fixed. After that, these kids start getting um, lots of ear infections. They're chronically sick, uh, strep all the time, allergies, and you name it, sinus infection, thing after thing after thing, constantly missing school, um, staying home, not being able to be active with all their friends and other kids. Another, you know, stressor on the family and stressor on the kid but this then graduates into, they don't grow out of these different things. Body starts adapting differently. And that's when we start seeing these behavioral issues um, or the things that people like to label as ADHD or sensory issues or ADD, whatever it is. So there's a few components of how this occurs. Again, looking at it chiropractically. Um, the first thing is fixation and misalignment. This is why um, we recommend kids get checked right after birth during that birthing process, like I was saying, there's a lot going on with that. But these different fixations and misalignments can create neurological issues. Uh, and how this does it is that next step is it's poor feedback to the brain. So if you guys were on with us on Sunday night, we did a webinar on proprioceptive seekers. We talked about proprioception versus nociception. Proprioception is good feedback to the brain. It's nourishing for the brain. It's what it wants. Nociception is that pain feedback. Okay. We don't want that. So think of proprioception being like Mozart, it's smooth, it's nice, it's calming, it's great to listen to, versus nociception being more that pain feedback. If you have a baby shark on loop in your minivan, 
that's nociception, okay? That's a lot of loud noise in your head. Uh, it gets loud, annoying, irritating, different stuff like that. 60% of this feedback in this movement or proprioceptive or nociceptive feedback is from the spine. And 33% of that is from just in that upper cervical area. Again, going all the way back to birth, very, very critical area with what we're looking at. Okay, so when this proper feedback or improper feedback is going to the brain, you get proper or improper energy output. Okay, so bad input equals bad output. And when you get that, you start to see um, the two different parts of the nervous system take hold and you have sympathetic or parasympathetic. So sympathetic is that fight or flight. Okay, it's a stress response and that's good. That's things that we, we need to have that in our life. Um, but it should be there and then gone. It shouldn't be stuck on go, go, go. Parasympathetic is rest and digest. Okay, these two things don't work at the same time. If your sympathetics or your fight or flight is way up here, your parasympathetics and rest and digest are going to be way down here. All right, those need to fluctuate. And if anything, that, that rest and digest needs to be up higher than that sympathetic or fight or flight tone. Um, you can't be in a state of protection, which is the sympathetic and growth, which is parasympathetic, at the same time. So the kids that come in our office that are stuck in this sympathetic tone, this fight or flight, this constantly go, 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 uh, we say they have, they have the motor of a Ferrari, okay, which is awesome. That's a high-tuned, I mean, performance vehicle, fast, revved up, ready to go. They're scooting along, but then they don't have any brakes, or their brakes are like worn out bicycle brakes that don't slow you down. They don't stop you. And there's just constantly go, go, go. And that Ferrari just doesn't slow down. That's going to lead to bad things. So let's keep going with the slides here. Um, the different categories that we're going to be talking about are raging bull, drunken bull, and raging drunken bull. All right. Raging bull is that high energy, that, that Ferrari, that go, go, go. Okay. Drunken bull is you can have a little bit of that, but these kids are going to have trouble uh, like connecting the dots, you know, lack of coordination, balance, tripping, uh, just clumsy in general. And then the raging and drunken bull is kind of the combination of both. All right. We're going to use these to try and take some of those labels off and help describe what's going on with these kids. So raging bull is gas pedal just stuck on constantly moving, go, 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 craving carbs, sugary foods, uh, picky eaters, they want to have that that consistency with their food. Um, crave a fast-paced atmosphere, video games, they have attention issues. A lot of times they'll have sleeping issues, high stress, um, a very low threshold to changes or transitions. Little to no understanding of remorse. Um, very little awareness of danger. And they'll, you know, go run out of the driveway or jumping off of things. You know, Superman jumping off the roof. Lack of focus, um, spending too much time inside, uh, not catching up on concepts in school, and grades start to suffer. A lot of times you'll have speech development issues, and sometimes with these kids you'll even see bed with, bedwetting. Uh, sorry, my mouth is getting dry. So when we're looking at these kids, a lot of what we're going to be looking at is this insight scan technology. This is one of our ways of analyzing and truly seeing what's going on with these kids. So um, we have the neurological scans. We're going to get a deeper picture of what's going on, um, especially with that feedback going to the brain and where those nerves are coming out and where those the, the uh, issues are going to be located. Okay. We have EMG. It's going to be measuring muscle tone. So we were talking about like a lot of that energy built up or a lot of times with the, the drunken bull, a more relaxed or um, deadened sense of the EMG. And then what we're going to be looking at is changes along the way as we go with these scans to make sure that we're getting the results neurologically that these kids need, okay? So going back, Raging Bull scans. So the very high level of energy. If you look at that slide right there, total energy of 338, we should have that around 100 would be ideal, okay? So very, very high energy, a lot of tension in the muscles, low efficiency of energy use. Um, good at organizing and pretty good balance side to side, but a lot of very, very high energy. Okay. And again, these are those kids that are just constantly go, go, go. It's 
raging bull, bull in a china shop. That's the, the image that we see with this. Okay, so drunken bull. These are the kids who have, like I said, trouble connecting the dots, um, a lack of coordination, balance, lack of focus. There's not the hyperactivity that you would see. Um, again, not trying to get towards those labels, but not the hyperactivity that you would see with the raging bull kids. They're very disconnected, um, overwhelmed. They shut down easy. They'll, they'll clam up and they're very low tone. Okay. And a lot of times, again, with them, you can see different speech issues. So these are some drunken bull schemes right here. Okay. So total energy, again, a little bit high, but if you look at organization and coordination, uh, this is with the EMG scan. Those are very low, 54% and 52%. We want those to be at 100, okay? So drunken bull, low organization, low coordination, moderate energy levels, all right? Low efficiency, um, they're, they're working really hard, low organization, that really is the key to it, is a low organization of how their energy is being distributed. These kids are very disconnected from what's going on around them. All right, lastly here, oop, jump too far. <laughs> Happens every time. All right, so raging drunken bull. This is a combination of both, all right? These are some of the more complex cases because um, they're gonna have char characteristics of the raging bull and the drunken bull and can flip-flop between the two, all right? These, a lot of times, will have the labels such as like ODD, um, ASD, et cetera. And these parents have usually tried everything possible. OT, PT, ABA therapy, you name it. And they're really, really just looking for help. And that's what we're trying to, to work with here. So raging drunken bull scans, energy 271, that's up there. Organization down below 50%. We're looking at both the raging and drunken at the same time right here. So high energy, low organization, low coordination, um, and just not keeping up with stressors if you go back to, like I was talking about on Sunday night, that proprioceptive input, um, not keeping up with your surroundings and not able to process them the way that you should be able to. Okay, so action steps. Here's where it comes together. This is what we love the most, um, is getting these kids scanned, figuring out what's going on with them, looking at uh, drunken bull, raging bull, is it both? Is it something completely different, okay? This is just these categories of things and how we see them in our office, um, in our approach. We, you know, we adjust these kids, we work with them. These aren't the big, you know, adult different adjustments where we, you know, whip different directions and pop everything. Very, very gentle. Not that we do that in our office in the first place. Uh, but these are very, very gentle adjustments. Not that you would typically think of um, with an adult or with chiropractic care with little, little babies and little, little kids, it's very, very light pressure. If you take your finger and press it against your eyeball before it hurts, um, that's about all the pressure it takes. After that, we step them up to a tool that we use, very, very gentle, um, really doesn't cause any issues pain-wise. There's no twisting, no popping, anything like that. We're trying to get that proprioceptive feedback and reading exactly where these kids need that feedback um, and applying it and getting it to them so that they can start internalizing that and not needing that from the outside and their bodies are able to control and coordinate themselves. Okay, so, sorry, go back to action steps here. Um, get your kiddo scanned. Let's see where the stress and the organization, the coordination and the energy and all that can be or where all that is with your kid and how it can be attributing to these different categories, okay? If this sounds like your office, please get a hold of us. We're Agape Family Chiropractic in Eureka, Missouri. Our number is 636-549-9004. Our website is Agape, fam, like short for family, and Cairo, short for chiropractic. So agapefamchiro.com. Um, I'll actually put that up in the description of this video. Can't believe I didn't do that at the beginning. Jump on there. You can schedule a consultation right on there. If you are outside of our area and looking for help with, with these issues, go ahead and give our, our, our office a call, or you can go to the National Family Wellness Alliance, um, click on search for, search, for, <laughs> talking too fast, search for providers and enter your city and or your zip code. It'll give you different people in your area that 
are doing the same thing that we're doing, looking at the same scans, looking at the same results that we're seeing in our office. Um, and if you want to come into our office and mention this, normally our initial exam uh, is $99. And then any x-rays we need to do are a flat 50 at the time of this recording. Let us know that you found us through this webinar. Um, we're going to be doing a $47 special. So $47 for all of these scans and x-rays if we need them. Okay. And all of that money is going to be going to the National Family Wellness Alliance. All right, all that money after they get it goes to um, pediatric chiropractic research and learning more about what we're doing, why it's working, and how to improve um, to better take care of these kiddos. So we're not keeping any of it. We just want to get your kids in, get them scanned, see if there's something we can do to help, and also further the profession. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Again, I'm Dr. Max at Agape Family Chiropractic. And thanks for tuning in.